This is absolutely one of my favorite film stocks that I've ever shot with. I mean, some of these photos might be the best color film photographs I've ever taken. What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be reviewing Amber D 400, a mysterious sinistil esque color film that I absolutely adore. <laughs> I'm gonna give you some specs about it, some information, my experiences, my general review and thoughts on how to shoot with this film. And finally, I'm going to be delving into the mystery of where this film comes from and who makes it. One thing I want to mention first before I dive into this video is that I'm gonna show both edited and unedited photos taken on this film. A lot of the richness and depth of the colors in the photos that you're seeing now has been exaggerated in post, but I don't think that counts against the film. I edit all of my film photos and I edited these ones to bring out the color toning that was already present in the unedited photos that the film delivered. With that said, let's talk about specs. Amber D400 is a 400 ISO daylight balanced film. D for daylight, 400 for ISO. It comes in a 35 millimeter format and each roll has 27 exposures. It is non-DX coded, so you have to use a DX code sticker if you wanna shoot with it in an automatic camera. The film sells for between 14 and 19 US dollars, though I paid 16 euros for it because I am a sucker. <laughs> it is produced by Rito Production Limited not retro project like I was saying in my head while I was doing the research for this video, and no, I had never heard about them either. In fact, the manufacturers of this film is quite a mystery, and I am looking forward to talking about that later on in the video. According to the Rito website, Amber D400 gives distinct colors and looks when shot in different lighting conditions. It is originally a motion picture film that has been adapted to be able to be developed in a C41 color process. Now you may be thinking, Gee, Yvonne, that sure sounds familiar. And I have to say, absolutely yes, it does. It sounds a lot like Cinestill, almost suspiciously like Cinestill. Amber D400 and Cinestill are both reformatted movie stocks that have had the Remjet layer removed. For those of you who don't know, the Remjet layer is a protective layer on the base of a motion picture film stock that protects that film from the halation of highlights and assorted other damages. What is halation? It is the spreading of light beyond its proper boundaries to form a fog around the edges of a bright image. This, basically. See this red glow in the highlights? See it? That is halation. Now, Cinestill is famous for its red halation, and here are some photos that I recently took on Cinestill. Ah! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> Sorry about that. I just knocked over my water bottle onto the power bar that my ring light and laptop are plugged into. It just like knocked over and then went glug, glug, glug. It's <laughs> like water straight into the power bar. <laughs> that was like the worst thing that could have happened. Okay, okay, okay. Now, Cinestill is famous for this red halation. While this effect is pretty iconic, it's also a necessary part of reformatting motion picture film to be suitable for development in C41 color processing. The Remjet layer, which protects the film from halation, cannot be processed in a standard C41 development system and requires the much rarer and much more expensive ECN2 process instead. Removing the Remjet layer allows that film to then be processed in C41, hence making it accessible to a wider and more casual market of consumers. So, does that mean that all reformatted movie stocks will have this red halation? I think so. <laughs> Let me know down in the comments if there's some that don't, but I would assume that yes, <laughs> pretty much all reformatted color film stocks meant for motion pictures will have halation. Anyways, let's look at my results. I shot this film during a recent trip to southern France and Catalonia, which honestly is probably one of the best places in the world to shoot a rich amber-colored movie film. True to its name, the film has this overall amber coloring that is perfect for capturing warm tones in golden hour lighting. Areas that are hit with full sun are bathed in this gorgeous red halation, and it also seems to be present in many of the boundaries between slightly lighter areas and slightly darker areas. So not just as a halation effect, but also as just this general tiny red outline around most details. There are some shots that I took that really show red tones in the shadows, even in areas that wouldn't be affected by halation. So it does seem like there is a slight red tone to this film overall that manifests as burgundy in some places. Now, according to the website, this film delivers a cool blue tone when shot in daylight, and I am not so sure about that. I took a few pictures with blue skies and water in them, and while the blue tones are pretty nice, I mean, there's definitely blue tones there, there's still that golden amber quality to the other colors in the frame. I mean, all of these images pretty much were shot in daylight, and I wouldn't say any of them really have a cool blue tone present. I'm not really sure why the website advertises that, because 
first of all, it doesn't seem to be true, and second of all, it kind of defeats the purpose of shooting with this stock, which, as far as I'm concerned, is like one step below a color shifting stock that intentionally makes everything look amber, not cool blue. Now, when I originally bought this film stock, I didn't do any research at all beforehand to see what I could expect, but based on the name Amber D400 and on the box art, I assumed that it was going to be a pretty heavily color shifting film, similar to like Kono Monsoon or Loma Chrome Red Scale. I thought it was gonna have like a really, really intense amber shift that would kind of look like how American movies tone scenes set in Mexico. <laughs> but I must say that I'm not disappointed with the extent of the effect. It's not so intense as to be a novelty film, but it is pronounced enough to add something to the image without adding too many parameters. As for the website's claim that this is great in low light, I am not so sure about that. I didn't really test it too much, but the one shot that I did take in low light didn't really impress me. <laughs> but I did get a bit of utility out of this photo because in it we can kind of see the grain structure. It is a very fine grain film which does kind of compete with the claim that this is good in low light because as we talked about in my Ilford Delta 3200 video, finer grains are less sensitive to light. But honestly, I think that the fine grain is an asset to this stock in general because the images it produces are beautifully crisp and full of detail as a result of that fine grain structure. So to summarize what makes this film so appealing, well, my takeaway is that the reddish shadows, fine grain, and red halation have a kind of synergy that really, really builds in the final image. So the red halation draws your eyes towards points of light by providing a pop of the most eye-catching color possible. The reddish shadows don't distract the eye or complicate the color palette like murky green shadows or dark blue shadows would. And finally, the fine grain structure adds to this lack of distraction in densely shadowed areas as well. Dense grain, tends to look like detail and that tends to draw your eyes towards the detail and then there's no payoff because it's just grain. So having a fine grain allows areas of shadow or like blank areas to remain blank and more visually neutral. Overall, having a stock that draws your eyes towards areas of light and also prevents unwanted distractions in areas of shadow makes it really easy to capture pleasing compositions when you're using harsh light and shadow to delineate areas of interest. All of that said, my least favorite image on this roll was one that didn't have any strong light or shadow. It looks just kind of drab. I had a few other shots that didn't turn out artistically on my end, but this is the only shot that I feel the film stock was really showing its shortcomings. That's it for duds though. Honestly, I loved every other photo on this roll, which is really, really saying something. <laughs> Absolutely, I don't think I could have gotten results anywhere close to this on a more basic film stock like Fuji Superior or Kodak Gold 200. I do think this stock was worth the money that I spent on it, as long as it's not just a repackaged version of Cinestill 400D, which <laughs> Let's talk about that now. Where does this film come from? There's been some debate about this film stock online because the website for Rito Productions is so incredibly vague. There's no about page for starters. There's a list of dealers around the world that sell film, but no information about who deals the film to them. There's an FAQ page with sections for cameras, shipping, and store policy, but no info about where it comes from. On the back of the box, in tiny little letters, it says made in PRC, which I am pretty sure is the People's Republic of China. It is at least packaged in China, but is it manufactured in China? I don't think so. So throughout this video, I have referenced the similarities between this film stock, or the Amber series in general, and Cinestill. After reading about the other ISOs that Amber comes in, I became suspicious because they are very similar to Cinestill's lineup. So is it just repackaged Cinestill? After doing a bunch of research, I think no, but also kind of. So some background. Kodak produces a movie film called Vision 3 500T. Cinestill 800T is a version of this stock with the Remjet layer removed. However, Apparently you can't just buy a roll of Vision 3 and remove the Remjet layer yourself. It has to be manufactured intentionally without the Remjet layer on it. So in order to have access to Vision 3 without the Remjet layer, one would allegedly have to be dealing directly with Kodak or with somebody else who dealt directly with Kodak. Cinestill is apparently buying a custom product from Kodak and repackaging it as Cinestill, the custom product being Vision 3 with no Remjet layer. The reason why Kodak is willing to do this for them is because they're buying massive quantities of this film stock. They buy it 
by the master role, which apparently looks like this. It seems to me that this makes sense to Kodak financially, because they don't have to spend any money on packaging and marketing the film to consumers, but they can still make a ton of money by producing it and selling it. So is Kodak selling the same master roles to Rito that they're selling to Cinestill? Maybe. Is Rito repackaging some variation of Kodak's movie film stock? I think almost certainly. However, since Cinestill is likely ordering a custom product from Kodak, it's possible that Rito is doing the same. Are they the same product? Who knows? How can I be so sure that this is originally a Kodak product? Well, there are remarkably few manufacturers in the world who actually produce their own film, particularly movie film in color. I think maybe Kodak is actually the only manufacturer left, to be honest with you. Rito is almost certainly not producing their own color movie film, because if they were, they would likely be selling it, and they're not. They are only selling the modified version, and I believe that's because they've bought the modified version from Kodak, and because Kodak doesn't sell the modified version to consumers, they are allowed to then repackage it and sell it to consumers. They wouldn't be allowed to repackage a product that Kodak does sell to consumers, i.e. their movie stock. As far as I'm concerned, this is almost 100% a Kodak product that has been modified and repackaged for sale by Rito. So the mystery remains, but hopefully I have shed some light on it. I certainly went down a rabbit hole trying to figure out where this film came from, what it was. I did my best, and hopefully you guys found it interesting. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy these kind of film in-depth looks. I have a lot of fun scripting and researching them, so let me know down in the comments if you want to see more, if you've got a particular film stock you'd like to hear about, you'd like me to test out. I am always happy to have an excuse to buy and shoot film. It is very expensive, and if I make a video about it, I can write it off on my taxes. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe, share this video, click that bell icon, and I will see you guys next week. Thank you guys so much for watching, stay sharp, and don't forget to keep shooting. Bye guys.